What is happening, y'all? Welcome back to episode two of the walkthrough, and we're ready to go through the fog. So, uh, we have a quest with a Strava right down there, but hold off on that for now. First, you want to roll through this, get up and kill this guy before he tries to blow you up. And we have a couple more enemies up ahead that we're going to fight. Good for him to... I also have a halberd. And you'll notice if you if you're paying attention to how I play, I am using spacing to my advantage a lot. Now these guys are a little bit goofy. If I can get them to all come along. Come on, everybody come in here. Oh, didn't work. Rude. Anyway, kill those three. I was hoping to lure them all into the explosives. It unfortunately, didn't work out that way. And then roll through here. We have our merchant. Uh, so Dragling has some consumables if you're low on grass, fire bombs if you're low on that. If you want, you can pick up a long sword or a club. A couple different weapons here, uh, but nothing really of value. And a little bit in the second zone, actually, he's going to have the claymore. The Claymore is a great weapon, costs 6,000, so keep that in mind. If you want the Claymore, start saving now, because we're at 3,000. That's only half the cost of it. Uh, we will not be getting the Claymore, but we will be showing you a number of great starting weapons in the next episode. Right after we're through this zone. Now with this, and now we have one of the most powerful items in the game, the Thief Ring. Now, the way the Thief Ring works is it decreases the radius that enemies can detect you at. And especially when using a bow, this becomes incredibly powerful because we're able to cheese multiple enemies with a bow. Uh, certain enemies were able to shoot but still stay out of their aggro radius. We can talk to them. Anyway, we just gotta kill these stragglings and then he'll jump on down. I am a Strava. It's going to give us the telescope, which you can use to, like, zoom in on stuff. And now we're just going to fight with Strava for a bit. We want to kill enough stuff that he is not at risk. Now, if you're trying to do, uh, basically, when, when Strava dies, whether from enemies or from us, he's going to get the drop the mausoleum key. The mausoleum key is used to access... Uh, that area that was right by the Red Knight that we fought. There is a, I guess we'll call him a mini boss in there uh, that you need to fight to get access to one piece of the puzzle for one of like the great swords of the game. Um, the game is like, I guess we'll call it Ultimate Weapon. It's called Northern Regalia. And there are two parts to that Demon Brant and Soul Brant. It's going to go this way, so we're going to go this way. Uh, but anyway, I wouldn't worry about it until later. We're going to be going through all of Astrava's quest chain. This. Make sure you have some fire bombs ready for this next part. Well placed fire bomb will kill most of those dregs. up those. Go ahead and pick up that. And basically he is just going to path around this area and fight this stuff uh, until it's either all dead or he's dead. So that's why we're kind of keeping pace with him, going a little bit ahead of him and just taking out key enemies. Because right here, this is pretty much the spot where he's going to stop. He's not going to go past this. Uh, if you want, you can go over here. Come on. Is he not going to come? There we go. See if I can snipe. There, look at that. Somebody give me a contract. Kill these guys. We're going to head up this way, uh, a couple more baddies to fight, and some loot. 
Uh, this right here is the path where we killed those three guys earlier, just to kind of pull the world together here in the event that you die. And up top we got one more baddie and a blue knight. They die with loot. Eh, I'm not worried about them. Uh, so go through the fog here. Heal up. And this right here is a trap. So what we want to do is get right here in this corner. And we are going to uh, put on the crossbow from earlier. And now you can see the rocks are just going to kill everything that would have been in our way here. Uh, so make sure we, you want to take that crossbow back off. You don't want it uh, putting your weight over capacity. And just head over this way and see the blue drake. Blue, the game calls it a blue dragon, but many people will say he's a drake because he doesn't have four legs. I don't care. All I know is he's deadly. Come on, boys. Come and fight me. Alright. So, uh, this next part, we're going to show this area over here, grab a couple items, and then we're going to sprint past the dragon. Excuse me, Drake. So we have two of them here. Now, there's a bunch of different shinies that you'll see. I know you're probably like, I want this stuff now. Just don't, don't try. Um, there's a trick where you can lure the red one over to the bridge that we're about to run across. And then after doing that, you can run back over here and grab stuff very quickly. But instead, if we just get this world to pure white, the dragons will disappear. And we're gonna have the world to pure white within like, by episode four. So it's really not worth it. Just, you know, don't get torched. Just have a little bit of patience. There is some really good stuff there. Uh, there's a ring that's this game's equivalent of the Havel's ring. It'll boost your equipment load by about 50%. We're not going to worry about it for now. Uh, so up ahead, get ready, and we're going to sprint. You just want to literally sprint through this as fast as you can. Try and time your rolls. Oh, no. 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 And we made it. All right. That's exactly why we were sprinting, because, as you can see, this guy is now going to run and torch anything that lives here. Don't even worry about the loot on the bridge, it's from something dying. It ain't worth it. Uh, over here, for this. Warrior soul, uh, let's see. Back up to the bridge, sprint past. Okay. So we're going to hit this lever. And that is going to open the gate to the boss for this area. Go this way. We'll get some pine resin back here. This is going to make the boss fight a lot easier. Upcoming boss is weak to fire, so that pine resin is going to come in quite clutch. This is pretty much identical to the other thing that we had gone down already. We just have some baddies, and you get an early introduction to the things that we're going to be fighting for the boss. 
So if for some reason you die against the Phallix boss, which is what these things are, uh, you can always farm up more uh, more fire stuff off of those guys that have torches, the one you just saw that we killed. You should be fine though. This this fight really isn't going to be challenging. Honestly, I don't know if they did, but it, it feels like they they nerfed it slightly. Come out here, grab the hero soul. Uh, if you get behind these things, they're basically one hit kills. The, the shield is the only thing protecting them. They just get behind the shield and they die pretty easily. Uh, they're also good for farming up upgrade materials early on in the game. Sharp and hardstone shard. They can even drop large shards. So if you're really trying to load up on upgrades, great stuff to do. Right, and we're back. So now if you die, just gotta run straight over here and fight the boss. Now the way this boss works is uh, basically it is a bunch of those little blobby guys encircled to create a phallus. Uh, it is weak to fire. The best way to do is as if you run and they do like a quick 180 behind this thing at the start, the slimes or the hoplites, they'll begin to break off of the boss. And you just wanna hit as many as you can with your weapon while your weapon has fire on it. You might take a hit here or there, but you should be able to start really chopping through these things. And after chopping through a couple, you'll end up getting to the boss. So just to show how I like to do it. I like to, to get oh, a couple hits in. You can already kind of see the a couple of them breaking off of it. Let's see, just we just took out a big old chunk right there. And once you've opened up a side like we have right here. You can really just start focusing, but I would suggest trying to kill as many of these things as you can. Um, even though this is the boss fight, they can still drop the upgrade materials and whatnot. So, you know, if you take down a bunch and get a bunch of upgrade mats, you're in, you know, you're in good shape. Once again, you don't have to kill every single one of these things. I just find it easy to do. Plus, it's kind of funny once you kill them all because the boss just sits there like, what do I do? He's just a blobby boy. I'm honestly not sure if he can even attack you. I've never, like, I mean, I don't know. This is something I didn't actually test. I'm not sure if he does it. Oh, there we go. He's slowly spitting out new ones. Hardstone. See, this is why I kill him all. Look at that. Hardstone. More hardstone. Can't see what I got because the whole body restored things going on. Oh, look at it all. Look at all those upgrade mats. Look at all the goodies we got. Ooh, I'm gonna beat the first level. So after that, come on over here. You'll get the Lead Demon Soul. And we can warp on back to the Nexus. Now, the Lead Demon Soul uh, can be used to make something called the Scraping Spear. Very, very cheeky weapon. Uh, it's good for PvP. If you're a fan of PvP, I would highly suggest you craft it. If you don't care about PvP, then don't worry about it. Just gobble it on up. Um, but basically what it does is it doesn't have a ton of damage. But what it does do is it damages durability. So you poke somebody with this thing, say, 10, 15 times, even if they're blocking, you're going to break all of their armor. So very, very scummy tactic, uh, but useful, especially against enemies who are going to uh, block. Now the jade hair ornament, we picked that up earlier. Uh, you can either trade this to Snuggly 
or uh, you can give it to, to, to Thomas here. We're going to just talk to him a little bit. Then we go to organize and then back out and he should give us a new dialogue here and get us a ring. There we go. We want to give him that ornament and he is going to give us a ring. Ring of Herculean Strength. Um, it'll raise your item capacity, so decent one to keep on you. Go ahead and get that. Now we're going to pop stuff. Uh, I don't like the weapon that comes from this. I believe I mentioned it, but uh, the axe is just too heavy to really use. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and eat that for some extra souls. Um, while we're here, just to talk about the pre-order stuff, if you got it. Uh, I think he still has the pre-order, even though I turned off the deluxe edition stuff. Yeah, so if you pre-ordered, you have the Reaper Scythe. Um, it's an interesting weapon. I mean, it's it's not OP by any means. Both this and the deluxe weapon cannot be upgraded, so they're pretty much good for the start of the game or fashion, and that's it. Uh, the deluxe edition Ritual Blade seems really powerful at first, but once again, can't be upgraded. So by the time we're past the Tower Knight, it's kind of useless. Uh, the gear that you could get with the deluxe edition is pretty nice. The ring that a lot of people think is uh, locked to the deluxe edition isn't. You can actually trade with uh, the crow to get one. But anyway, after we have spent our souls, we can upgrade if we want, but I would not upgrade just yet. We're going to be going and gathering some weapons in uh, just a little bit here. So first we got to do the monumental. There's a couple different things we need to do in the Nexus, but the first thing we want to do is kill ourselves. Now, as I mentioned back in episode one, uh, with world tendency, if we were to, so let me actually better to show this. So if you look at this, you'll notice that there's a very, very slight difference between the Boletarian Palace icon right now and how the one and Stonefang tunnel looks. It's it's very minimal. Uh, but Boletaria right now is at plus one because we killed the boss there. So because of that, if we kill the two more bosses there, it'll jump up and it will become plus three and then it will be pure white. However, if we die in human form, it's going to go down by minus one. So basically, if you're going into human form and you're running into these places, one of two things is either going to happen. Either you're going to just kind of stay at neutral if you're not dying that much, but you're still dying. Or on the flip side, the world is going to go towards black tendency, which you do not want. Now, outside of the uh, world events that also happen, one of the major differences is when your world tendency is on white, enemies have less HP, so they're going to be easier to kill. When your world tendency goes towards black, enemies are going to be harder to kill. But to offset that, they're going to drop more souls and they're going to have... Uh, a better chance to get rare items. So, in general, play the game through once on pure white. You know, knock out all that stuff that you need to knock out, and then worry about doing stuff on the, on pure black. We have long awaited you, Slayer of Demons. Anyway, talk to this guy. He'll give you a big cutscene that's kind of explaining all the stuff in in the game, if you will. Uh, and then once that's done, all of our arc stones are unlocked. Now, there's actually a couple pieces of loot that are kind of hidden around the nexus that we're going to grab real fast first over here for a stone of imperial eyes you can use that to turn back into human form we're not that worried about that now it is your turn I'm going to continue going up top so let me move my notes here everything I need make sure I'm not overlooking everything um, we're going to run past the Monumental, up top to the Pantheon. It's a cool little area up here. Uh, up here you can see a variety of things for online. So, all of these are ratings for who has killed the most phantoms. Uh, over here, Mender of World. All kinds of neat stuff. And if we go out and we go all the way down, is it this side? Check my notes. Um, run past Pantheon for another stone. Yep, right over here. But right here, this is the, the, the person, the tenth most person to farm up souls. So, pretty interesting stuff, just being able to, to see all this stuff. So, think of it as like a perpetual leaderboard. Uh, just always having some neat stuff up there. Let's go up there and just look around. But we mainly came up there to get the, uh, the stone that we wanted.
Right, and with the stone, we are heading back down. Alrighty, and there are two items we can get. So one of them is basically right there at the edge of those stones, and one of them is also right below down there, which you can kind of see. So the stuff is is kind of tricky to get. It's basically like a falling puzzle. So we need to walk and very slowly uh, get down these ledges. Get it. Oh, I think I... Oh, that was close. That's the one. Thought that was the end of me. Really thought that was it. Now we go up top to the other set of stones, and we'll get that one. This one is a little bit easier, I think. Nope! 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 <laughs> oh, man. Um, so to better explain... Well, not better, but just to, to add a little bit of more context into the whole phantom versus human form, the reason that it's okay to die in the Nexus is while the Nexus does actually have a tendency of its own, the Nexus doesn't have any tendency events associated with it. So even if you die here a hundred times and the Nexus's tendency was as dark as night, it wouldn't matter because there's no tendency events here to worry about, which is why we do all of our dying over here at the Nexus as opposed to other worlds. Now, once you've completed all of the challenges of a world, all the, the pure white stuff and unlocked it all, if you want to go and make that world uh, into pure black, you know, just go and suicide and have a great time and not worry about it. There we go. Oh, no! <laughs> well, I never I did say it was a trick fall. I never said this part was easy. Uh, but it's some grass that we're trying to get, which the stuff isn't, it's not needed for now, but it's more one of those things that, especially now that you've seen it, you know the loot's there, and it's not like we lose anything uh, for, for falling and dying over and over again, you know, as long as you're picking up your souls, of course. That would be disappointing if you were to not pick up your souls and lose them because you were trying to grab a grass. Oh, man. Let me try going, go from the side here. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, okay. Down again. Down again. There we go. Got it. All right. Use that. And now that we've talked to the monumental, we have unlocked the ability to level up. She's going to give us the white eye stone and blue eye stone. These are used to uh, become a summon or boot people out of your world. Uh, but talk to her and go ahead and level up. Now, as for what you're going to level up, that is largely going to be based on your starting class. As a general rule of thumb, don't bother leveling up luck. Uh, there is one weapon in the game that scales with luck, and beyond that weapon, it's generally a crap stat. Uh, faith, I wouldn't worry about too much for now. There are some nice weapons that require around uh, 16 faith to use. But for now, our faith is plenty where it's at. Um, at the very start of the game, what I would suggest doing is both endurance and vitality just to get a little bit. So getting these both to 15 is a really nice starting point in general. Uh, if you can get your vitality even higher, get it up to about 20. That's looking good. Let's see if I can get my endurance up. That looks great. So I'm actually going to end up taking um, this probably to 30, this to 30 as well. Uh, but right there. That's, you know, we're focusing on our basics. We're going to increase our health. We're going to increase our stamina pool, uh, which actually I'm going to be going strength build. So I'll pull a little bit out. We'll go to 15 and, and bump a little bit more in there. Get our damage up some. And already, you know, now now my health is feeling it's feeling pretty good, right? It's feeling comfortable. It's made indeed. Uh, so from here, we're actually going to wrap things up. Uh, at this point, Demon Souls very much opens up. You can go to any of the worlds now. So you can go to any single one that you want. Uh, we have a very explicit order that we've already picked out. 
or the walkthrough uh, that I feel is kind of the, the safest route of general progression through the worlds. Um, and we're going to be going through that, obviously, as the series progresses. But in the next episode, we are actually going to aim to get a bunch of uh, early starter loot. Uh, there is some starter loot kind of regardless of what class you're playing as that is really good stuff to get a hold of. And so we're going to make an effort to guide you to grab all those pieces of loot uh, and just kind of put you in a better position to really continue on with this journey. So whether you're playing as like a dex or a magic or a strength, uh, regardless of the case, we'll have a, a really nice weapon that you'll be able to take and call your own with the next episode. So stay tuned for that, and I will catch you all very soon.